So let's revisit an earlier homework exercise, in this case from Module 4, where it was raining cats and dogs. And we'll add a game over message to end the program. We'll add a spin message to spin the cats and dogs when, say, the user hits the space bar. And we'll add speed buttons via the up and down arrows. And what we'll see is that message passing provides a very nice centralized solution to adding all these features to our program. All right, so I'm going to exit out of PowerPoint, head out to the desktop. And then we are once again back in our exercise files. And you'll see there's one for exercise from module four that is raining, raining cats and dogs. Let's open that in Scratch. Let's go ahead and run the program, remind ourselves what it does. Now this one is not a game per se, because Scratch doesn't move around and try, for example, to catch the dogs and cats. So they're just raining down and you hear the water running. So that's as much of a game as it is. All right, but it's working. And then what we're going to do first is add this notion of game over. So the user can quit or stop the program. And I'm going to use the Q key, Q for quit. So I'm going to go to the centralized code area, i.e. the stage, and we'll we can see that this is where the sound is played, the water's running. And what I'm going to do is grab a control block for when, and again, I'm going to use Q, when Q is pressed. So here's where the message comes in. When Q is pressed, what I want to do is broadcast a message to the other sprites, tell them to stop, and then I want to wait for the sprites to finish whatever they're, they're going to do, and then the, we'll have the program end. So there's two kind of broadcasts. There's broadcast and then broadcast and wait. Usually when the game is ending, you want to broadcast and wait. That gives the sprites a chance to say something or do something. And then when everybody's done, then we go ahead and maybe stop the program. Now in this case, what am I going to broadcast? I'm going to broadcast a new message, and I'm going to call that game over. And then I'll wait for everyone else to get that message and do their thing, and then we will stop all and end the program. So it's pretty straightforward. Just create message and broadcast it. And then what we do is have the sprites receive it and then respond. So I'll go to cat one and let's have cat one. So here we go. When I receive and notice it defaults to game over. So when I receive, what do we want to do? I'm going to have the, the cats and dogs play a sound. So let me go import a sound. And of course, we will use animal sounds. The cat will meow. Well, meow. There you go. So in my script, when I receive game over, I am going to play the sound cat until I'm done. So that'll play the whole sound clip. And that's all we're going to do when we receive the game over message. We don't stop the program. That's the job of the centralized code. We just perform our function when the uh, message is received. I'm going to drag that script to cat2. So now cat2 will also play a sound when the message is received. The dogs will do a similar thing, but I'm just going to have them play a dog sound. So when I receive game over, let's have the dogs bark. There we go. Dog1 sound. So we'll play that sound when we receive game over. And then I will drag that script onto dog2, so dog2 will do the same thing. So now I'm done. Now I have a way to stop the game. Let's go ahead and run the flag. So we hear the water running. We have the dogs and cats. And then I'm going to hit Q on the keyboard. And we see the program come to an end with a very nice centralized solution. And the advantage, again, of that centralized solution is that suppose I want to use a different key, I only change it in one place in the centralized stage area, and I don't have to go and change it for every sprite in the program. Now, when the game ends, it'd be nice to put a little background up there. It says, you know, game over or goodbye or something like that. So we saw that earlier. Let's go ahead and do that. It's a nice, nice thing to do. So let's paint a new background. So I'm going to just say in a bigger font. Bye. And then let's, I don't know, make a little swirly underneath. Bye. Okay, there we go. And we'll call that our 
by background. And we'll change the name of the, of the startup background to default. Okay, so now in our script, when, when the user hits Q to quit, what we're going to do is change the background to by. So we'll broadcast, actually, let's do that. Yeah, that's fine. Broadcast, switch to buy, and then end. And of course, when the program starts, we want to make sure we switch it to the default background. All right, let's try that. Okay, so we see a nice clean background. We see the cats and dogs raining down. I'm going to hit Q. They play their sound, and we see bye. Now, it sounds like the program is working, but I just realized I made a small error. The sounds that we heard are only coming from one of the cats and one of the dogs. So, for example, if I go to cat 2 and try to play the sound, I'm clicking on it, but nothing happens. And that's because when you copy the script, you get the code, but the sound is unique to each sprite. So to hear the sounds from all the sprites, you need to actually import the sound for yeah. each sprite. So now it should play when I click it. Yeah. There we go. So I need to do the same for dog too. So it, the code is there, but the sound is not. So then actually you don't hear anything. Yeah. All right. So now we have a correct program. Yeah. Doesn't sound any different, but... At least now I know all the dogs and cats are barking. Okay, so let's uh, look at another feature, and this is having the cats and dogs spin. So just another example of message passing. So in this case, I'm going to go to the stage area, the centralized area, and when the, let's see, I'm going to do space bar. So when the space bar is pressed, I'm just going to broadcast a different message. So I'm going to broadcast a new message called spin. Oops. I hit Q. I meant to zoom in. So in this case, we just broadcast. We're just going to tell the sprites to spin. I'm not going to wait because I don't need to do anything after they spin. I'm just going to tell them to spin, and that's all my, my little script block does. Now I'll go to cat1, and in response to the message, so when I receive the spin message, I'm going to loop and turn. So I will turn 15 degrees clockwise. Now I want to turn a full circle. So 24 times 15 is 360. So 360 degrees will be a full circle. And we can test that just to click on it and see. You'll see uh, cat one over there spin. There we go. And I'm going to drag that script onto cat two. And then I'm actually going to drag that onto dog one, and I'm going to drag that onto dog two. So now all the animals have the script. But just for fun, I'm going to have the dogs turn the other direction, counterclockwise. All right, so the cats will turn one way, the dogs will turn another. And remember, this will be triggered by the space bar. Let's go ahead and run. We see our cats and dogs raining down. Now I'm going to hit the space bar and we see them all spin. And again, because the code is centralized, I can easily delete this feature yeah. or change what key press or how the spin messages is sent. Okay, final demo, let's, um, let's add a speed so we can speed up or slow down the cats and dogs. And I'll do this through the arrow keys. So back to the stage area, so it's centralized. We will use, oh, first I need to add a variable. I'm sorry. So we need a speed variable. So let's make a variable called speed. That'll be the speed at how fast they move, basically. And let's not make that visible. Well, let's leave it visible so you can, we can see it on the screen. And then for each of the cats and dogs, right now they move two steps. So you see that here? What I'm going to do is change that to be dependent on the variable. So each cat and dog will move based on the variable. Now we can control their rate of movement. Okay, so right now the speed is set to zero, so they wouldn't move at all. So let's make sure that when the program starts, remember one of the rules is always initialize the variables to something meaningful. So when the program starts, let's make sure the speed is set to, let's say, one. Okay, so at this point, the program should still work fine. Let's make sure. Right, and you see they're moving pretty slow because they're moving at a pace of one, whereas before it was two. Yeah. Oh, 
Okay. Now we just need to add some check for key presses so we can respond to up and down keys and speed up or slow down. So I'll go to the control area and let's see when we're going to do the up arrow. So we'll go faster. So when the up arrow is pressed, I'm going to just change the variable. So change speed by one. And what's nice is we can just run the program and try this. So now they're running, moving it one, at a, one step at a time. I'm going to up arrow a few times. You see it moving much faster. And we can spin, of course, with the space bar. Whoa. There's an error there. Oh, see? That's good testing. That one dog went off into the right corner. Uh-oh. I have to investigate that later. All right, let's, uh, let's add the down arrow for slow down. So same process. When... The key is pressed, but in this case, let's make ourselves some room here. So when the down arrow is pressed, we will... Now, normally what you'd think to do, we'll have to be a little careful here. Again, this is where testing would reveal a problem. Normally you'd think, well, when the down arrow is pressed, we just want to slow down. So we change the speed by minus one. But there's something you have to be careful of because you don't want to. You only want to do this if the speed is one or bigger. If the speed is one and then you slow it down to zero, they'll stop. And maybe, I mean, maybe you want that, maybe you don't. But let's watch what happens. See, now they're running slowly. If I down arrow, they stop. So one way to prevent that <coughs> is what we'll do is we'll add an if statement, and we only slow them down if they're still moving. So by that I mean we'll do an if statement. And we'll look at what the speed is. So if the speed is greater than one, then we slow them down. So what I'll do is get a greater than block and grab my variable speed. And I'll say, I only want to do this if. If the speed is greater than one, then it's okay to slow them down. But if the speed is one, I don't want them to stop. So I, I'll stop paying attention to the down arrow key and we'll, and we'll, the slowest they go is one. Okay, so now I'm running the program. I'm going to speed them up. Up arrow, up arrow, up arrow. We see the speed is four. Slow them down to three. Slow them down to two. Slow them down to one. Now I'm going to keep pressing the down arrow, but because of the if statement, we're basically guarding the issue of slowing them down to zero. So they never stop. They just move one step at a time. That's the slowest they go. We speed them up. Spin. And quit. All right, that's a fun demo. Let's go back to the PowerPoint and we'll finish up.